Hello and welcome back for game two between Maryville and Weston. During the break, USC's marching band was keeping the crowd lively as we gear up for the next installment of the championship match. Game one over to Maryville crumbs in pretty resounding fashion, but Weston are no strangers to being the underdogs in a series. They did it in a way that we expected, with Niles being very aggressive into the top lane, drawing so much pressure, but the real hero to me was Wolfie. He played Zoe, a pick that we typically don't see in Collegiate, and he just smoked the competition. He went 4-0 and 5, I believe. He did not die a single time, and he had so many game-winning picks that I think that you have to look at him coming up into this match as somebody that you must not give Zoe to, and you have to keep down. He's been doing this under the radar every single match, quietly finding plays that just get so much for Mary. I think both mid laners, honestly, on these teams, Slash has been like a very silent rock for this team, really carrying through with a lot of consistency. So we'll see what the uh, the draft brings. It's brought, again, a lot of spice, a lot of specialized picks, and a lot of meta stuff as well is kind of floating around. So Maryville start off with Julius as target ban of the Hecarim, and Nico, just a generally good champ like Gorica, has been using to great effect in particular. And Niles, of course, gonna lose his Jace as well. Yes, the teams have opted to change sides now, and I want to see what happens with Aatrox. Maryville continues to prioritize this champion because of their ability to flex it in the jungle, the mid, and the top lane, and it looks like it's caught most teams off guard. Even in the match they lost with it yesterday, it looked like it was a solid strategy. And if Western is going to proceed forward, they have to at least recognize that you can't commit your champions just yet until you know where Aatrox is going. Well, it should be a bit easier to navigate on red side, perhaps for Western as they ban away Rise. Last ban for Maryville is Akali here in phase one. We'll see what Western do want to give over. Of note, Silas did drop through picks and bans last game. So with Tristana ban, may, might be something they're looking for now. But also, all of Clyde's champions have been unlocked again. So that's Thresh and Pike bans are off the table. Yeah, very interesting. Now, they're not prioritizing Clyde's bans because, yeah, he keeps playing Nautilus. You're not really hurting him. He's just playing something that's just as good. And the Aatrox gets locked in once more for now. So having red side, I think West is going to be very pleased by this. And the fact that now Saskia does not have that Tristana means that we might see a higher priority in Short Hop's champions. The Sivir, the Jinx, they're still left up. They're not bad to take early on, but they're still somewhat exploited. Well, they do decide to steal the Thresh away here. So we'll take that and give it to Blaze Nova. I, I wonder... I wonder with Silas dropping through last draft if the teams maybe just aren't as hot on the champion, but with Ryze and Akali both banned already, Silas does leap out as one of the more powerful flex options available, but perhaps it's just more prudent for Short Hop to take an AD and complete the bot lane here. Oh, Julius also wants to take Graves. So yesterday we saw the Silas being dropped in priority by Western in their series against UCI. It looked like both teams were not able to get the most out of that pick. And that's been a trend that's been in the tournament so far. It just happens that Silas is not currently working out. Not a big deal. The teams must adapt and continue forward. And Julius has played some games of Graves before, and he gets to be really aggressive. Oh, here. wow. They, yeah, steal, the denial. they steal the Sivir. Just like, all right, you're going to take our bot laner. We'll take one of yours as well. Clyde apparently just happy to be back on Thresh. I was hoping to see the Sivir in this first rotation out of Western, but the Jinx is still up. They know that if they don't take it now, it's going to get banned out. So do they want to go back to Caitlyn to have some sort of Caitlyn Thresh Graves comp or just take the Sivir? Wow, they want the Kled oh. instead for Gorica. Well, he is known and supposed to be a self-addressed Kled one trip. But Niles plays more Thresh, more Kled than he has. Yeah, in Solid Cube, oh. I looked it up. It's like three times more Kled uh, games this season. I'm pretty sure Niles knows how to handle this matchup, considering that they've been trading tips between top laners about how to become better players. So I'm sure that they've spilled the beans as to what the best way to deal with Kled is. It's also Jack Span, so Niles continuing to eat Bans here with the Aatrox. Also having the option to move to the jungle again, like it was in the last game. I have to think that, yep, yeah, Shorthop's going to start losing picks again. Jinx already banned. We knew it was coming, but there was a higher priority in the Kled than on the Jinx. So I think that Western has an idea. They have a set plan here because they have been looking into drafts really extensively. You saw them yesterday against UCI. They really caught a great understanding as to what was going down into the series. Each little best of five develops its own meta. So here, this meta is calling for Jax, Sejuani bands, and a first, well, rather, first set of picks 
clip. I wonder if they ban the Caitlyn here. Just really kind of stick it to him. Caitlyn's just not a ban worthy champion. I think you can, you're happy having the Caitlyn up, even though it's gonna be a bit of a problem against Sivir. The Orianna ban though, that is Slasher 1144's most played and most comfortable champion. Yesterday he played it back to back to back because of how good he was on it, because of how well the team understood the limits of Orianna and what they could do with the ball on themselves or just with her own damage. So making sure that Western does not have comfort picks is a great way to disrupt this Kled. Ooh, takes the Zoe though, Wolfie. Gonna lose the champion that he was very proficient on in the last game. It's Slash's turn. What's the answer gonna be? Because I hope it's the high school matchup, it was the Zed. Zed into Zoe. That did not work out. But he has Velkos as a pick That's that true. you typically wouldn't expect that against Zoe because it's the same story. If you get tagged, you're you're gonna get taken out right away. And let's see what Wolfie answers. I don't think Wolfie's gonna be doing Aatrox or Irelia. That looks like Niles and CKG. Oh my. I don't think Clad's taking back here. But they might go Zareth. Wolfie does lock it in. That's his pick. That's his go-to. You know, the stun is going to be really powerful against Zoe. You know when she's coming in because she's trying to have a clear line of sight against you as well because her skill shots will get blocked by the minion woods. So the second that she hops in, Zareth throws out the stun hopefully connects onto Zoe, and then you can burst her down. So I can see why you would go Zareth into this, but it's a kind of matchup where whoever gets the stun on each other first will win. It's just, you know, it's a matchup of skill shots. The person who misses less is probably going to win the matchup. That's the skill shot matchup indeed. And the last pick is going to be the Kai'Sa for short hop. A pretty nice pick in positioning, repositioning around the team fight, especially against Norelia, against the Zareth. If you tag him with that W in the middle of his ultimate channel, you're going to be able to bolt right on to him and hopefully take him out. So I like the Kaisa pick. I just don't know what they're going to be able to do in the bottom lane. I don't think we've seen Blaze Nova and Short Hop play this lane in the tournament so far. Yeah, we'll have to see. But certainly a lot to look for here in this game. Adjustments made by Weston here in the draft. Julius. I think falls back even further to comfort, so does Gorica. So maybe trying to shore up a lot of the pressure that was being dished out in the last game from that section. Well, they're up against the exact same top lane, Jungle Duo of Aatrox Irelia, which gets really scrappy. And the later the game goes on, they become dive buddies, which makes it so hard for your squishy back line. At least you always have Thresh to give you that lantern and that play to stop a lot of Irelia's dashes and even Aatrox's dashes and abilities. So they have ways to deal with it. It's just going to come down to execution, just like the mid lane matchup. Skill shot, it's a skill v skill game. Certainly is. Well, curious to see how this game shakes out. Maryville have looked pretty dominant so far throughout their run. Weston a lot scrappier, a lot more exciting, but still just as good to get here to the grand final stage. So this is a team that you never, ever, 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 ever want to count out. Cross. Don't sleep on Canada. <laughs> is that how the saying goes? Every time. You, you can never forget about him. It's the same thing with hockey. You can't count him out. All right, well, game two here, Maryville versus Weston. Varsity versus Canada. A classic <laughs> League of Legends collegiate matchup. I'm serious. It is, I believe it was. It's always Varsity versus Varsity or Varsity versus unsponsored Canadian teams. Yep. Turns out they're pretty good. A lot of Canadian players as well in the LCS, but before we uh, blab on any further, we're gonna throw it down to Ovali, who's standing by with a sideline report. Thanks, guys. Coach Leto, similar start to this series as the one yesterday. You guys are taking on another former champion. How's the team going to do it coming in as the underdog yet again? Well, our team focuses a lot on scaling. And when they say scaling, they don't mean in one game. They mean to the next game in the series or the next day in the tourney. So we don't let our previous experiences affect us. Like one loss doesn't mean anything to us. We played fine, went down 1-2 against the tournament favorites in UCI. And yeah, I think that everybody just has to play respectful and we can win any game. What's the most important thing that you think that the team needs to focus on coming into game two? Uh, I mean, we already know that their power player is their top laner. He is the best player by far, in the, probably in the tournament. So if our rookie top laner can hold his own, then the rest of the map can carry him. I like the respect coming out from you. Best of luck to you and your team. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ovali. Yes, it is battle freshman in the top lane.
That's a really interesting thing to say that you rarely hear out of any other scene in that one coach will say the other team has the best player in this tournament. And even the players respect that. So I love that they're giving that kind of respect to the opponents because you rarely see that because players, they're kind of finicky and they don't want to be, oh, my coach thinks that we're not the best players ever. Like, well, you know, you were a team game. You will win as a team regardless of the individual. Yeah, and Goriko actually went teleport here on this Kled, so certainly respecting the power of this Aurelia. No ignite today for Goriko. Yeah, it's all about respecting oh, yeah. the I bottom say. lane, the dives. You don't want an Aurelia teleporting into your Kaisa lane. We'll see it. Getting that slowed down, but getting pushed in a little early here, trying to keep the wave in a decent spot. Is CSing nicely as the waves crash through? And Sasko and Clyde off to their pushing power once again. I guess Siv is pretty good at that. Both up gonna have to bide his time a little bit more, but once again, I mean, I like that the coach talked about scaling, but in a lot of ways, this is certainly a team that leans on their scaling. Well, it's, it's always good to be able to keep your composure as the game progresses. That's really what it is. As long as you can stay level-headed, you're gonna be able to play just as well as your game one as your game four and if you have the stamina to do so because these games take a toll on you they're very stressful we heard it from short hop yesterday that the series against uci was one of the most stressful games if not the most difficult game of his entire life so things are about to get a lot harder here now that there is even more on the line slash of the oh he walked back into the bubble gonna eat a big chunk of damage as a result slasher does take a tower shot for his trouble but not too upset as Julius has been quietly farming throughout his jungle. Same with CKG, but Graves is very zippy through the forest. He's happy being down here. You know that the jungler are most likely just grabbing Scuttler here. And because your Kai'Sa and Thresh are trying to push back the wave, as long as you're there, it'll let them crash it into the minion wave, get some harassed down onto the Sioux. CKG gets the other crab. So Julius there again is continuing to farm through. Here we go, a gank top snuck up behind Kled, who's trying to crash a minion wave. This might be first blood unless Gorica can sniff it or outplay it. Only level three plus the red here for Aatrox, but Julius nowhere in sight and a massive wave here attacked by Aatrox. So CKG gonna go now as the wave moves through. Out of vision still for a while. Gorica, he's gonna get knocked up with the first Aatrox Q into the chain he goes. He still has his splash, but they're trying to wait it out. The stun does get flushed though and Gorica's out of there. You get the summoner spell, but the wave is still pushing back. So he's gonna need help to get back into this lane. You see that Julius is coming back through the lane. There's pings going down. Look at that. He now understands how Aatrox got that gank off. Pinging the Herald, knowing that he dashed over before going for it. And Julius is right behind him, hoping that Aatrox would try the gank again. Niles actually gonna go in instead. That might be what he wants. Gorica dismounted, but there's the Graves. Niles has a creep to dash back to. Finds another for a bit of extra healing. Gorica, though, built up a lot of courage. Julius is gonna push in the rest of the wave, and both junglers come up top lane, and no kills just yet. You've got Niles already about 14 CS ahead. Oh, Nash just missed that last one, so he's gonna stick to 13, which is still a significant advantage. Bottom lane though, going well here for Weston. It's gonna be Clyde, perhaps dead here. Flash over, finds the wall for the hook, but he doesn't quite go far enough, and he's gonna go down. That's first blood over to Short Hop, starting it off right here for Weston. And that's that Kai'Sa, the champion that you did not expect Short Hop to be on because they valued the Sivir so highly, denying Short Hop. But Blaze Nova prioritizing the denial thresh out of Clyde. Instead of banning it, let's take it ourselves and all in the bottom lane. No Tristana. No mercy. And again, just such an easy combination set up here. And then the Lance end to finish it all off. All started with a great hook. That's pretty much how every Thresh play goes. And you can never forget about Kai'Sa proccing that maximum HP buff. When you get hit by that fourth stack, that's when the damage, when the hurt really comes through. Every great story needs a good hook, Crumbs. Oh, so far, nice. 20 CS up for Short Hop. Again, we talk about how he's a player that will play in any situation, feels so confident and able in his late game. Well, early game's going just great. As Julius maybe even thinks about starting up this Infernal Drake with the bottom lane pressure that he does have, although they're currently absent from the lane. Yeah, that's a bold time. There's not a single member pushing out. Perhaps 20 seconds too early, but you can see the idea that this Infernal likely highly prized between the two teams.
we go. They're gonna try to go on to Clyde, but look at CKG. He's coming here as well. Clyde, no flash. Remember, Saskia has it as well, but as you mentioned, Aatrox rolling in. Gonna, gonna try and Julius. turn it back around. Clyde gets the first route. Aftershock proxy is the TP. That's gonna be Niles roaming in to try and get a few kills. CKG finds the first knockup. Niles are looking for the stun. He stuns Goroku as he comes in. Now gonna fight it out, but he misses the Vanguard. That Saskia, though, over to take down Blaze Nova. That's Goroku gonna be dismounted and now knocked up by the Aatrox. That'll be a kill to Clairdon. Not enough to save him as Niles grabs one. The Sleepy Trouble Bubble does not connect, and the Zareth was roaming down as well, so really great response out of Mary. But, and they're trying to get Julius here, who dodges out of all of Zareth's ultimate charges. Five people into the bottom lane. They do not want to give up this Infernal. Some rare misses by Wolfie on the skill shots from the ulti, but more than enough pressure from Maryville to get the kills, get their first blood on the board, and get themselves the Infernal Drake as well. And the gank from... Western was a little bit too early because the Graves was the one to start it. Kaisa only provided that Cutlass to slow the Nautilus down, who's able to use that hook to get out of that place. So look at how it went down. Kaisa and Graves are the ones who engage. Thresh does not get to make it in, and he doesn't get to hit a plate or a hook. That's how you want these fights to start. So the second that they come in, it's already too late. The commitment has happened, and Niles is first to teleport. So he makes it in. Kled is still trying to debate, should we go in? What is the right play? It turns out that even teleporting down was a mistake. Yeah, teleports in only to be killed, unfortunately, for him. And Slasher also late there to that one. Wolfie was able to find the room first by the looks of things. So nicely played there. Both teams reacting pretty well, but it is still Maryville that come out on top. Of the gold not reflecting that right now. Really just is that Infernal Drake. That's the bulk of that league, which of course will not be reflected in the gold. And typically we want to look at major items that are completed to look at power spikes. But one worth noting is the Ninja Tabis out of Niles. Because you're up against a Kled and a auto attack based jungler in Graves, that's going to make him really difficult to get ganked. So Julius and Gorica will have to start thinking about helping other lanes. Niles with flash up as well is way too hard to kill unless he overextends like a maniac, which rarely happens. So even though he's in the top side, I think that he has to be looking elsewhere. Has double drones as well. So it's really invested early in his laning phase and that's been paying off nicely as far as individual gold leads go. Clad and Sasko, they're running back down to the bottom lane. Don't forget that Short Hop, despite the mishap there in the bottom lane, still has a kill and still has uh, about 20 CS ahead in the matchup. So that part of it's going well. Slasher didn't have the paddle star back by the looks of things. So Wolfie lives this time. No need to burn that cleanse on that situation. And look at what happened with the junglers. Julius had showed up into the top try and immediately CKG starts pathing up if he needs to respond with a counter gank. So always making sure that his top laner is in a safe spot. We heard I'm Avi speaking about what CKG loves to do for his top laner. He'll sacrifice CS to make sure that his laners get ahead. And I have to agree. I think that right now, that is the right way to play the jungle. The jungle pool is just not the greatest at getting a lead and then hammering it home. Whereas if you can spill those kills over to your laners, they're in a much better spot to carry a game. Now it's here trying to pull the wave, getting in a nice spot here, but it will stack as we'll have to look to trim that down. Still holding a nice healthy CS lead. That's done misses. So does the bear trap on a rope. Top lane just continuing to be kind of more of a quiet build up, similar to the bottom story here for Weston and Short Hop. With CKG paying a lot of attention to this half of the map this time. He's just moving in places where he's expecting Julius to be in and is ready to counter any sort of aggression that Weston wants to throw at them. And it's a really good way of playing Aatrox. He's not the greatest at just going in there and finding an amazing gank. And the Wolfie gets hit, but he does pop the cleanse. Yeah, unfortunately, I think he maybe hoped the bubble was going to expire, but had to walk over anyway and does burn the summoner as a result. You can start to see why Zareth was picked into Zoe. By being able to predict her location with her ultimate, you're going to be able to land a lot of your skills. Going Ooh, assisting here in the gang. CKG has found a jungle, and Niles also down here. Wolfie able to get the last shot from mid lane. That was a really nice combo, but they're going on to Slash. Jump now with Clyde. Uh -oh. Dev charge, hook, not going to land. Good juke right there from Slasher. Wolfie, though, nails the stun. But they don't follow up, maybe not expecting it to land. Looking, but there's nothing there. The Rift Herald is going to be traded. 
that was a really cool combination between Aatrox hitting you with the root, making sure that you get pulled back, and the Serath ultimate from downtown. So much damage that a squishy jungler like Graves just can't survive. And again, Julius's aggressive tendency is kind of getting him in rough spots here. Build up though, you know, to Sasuke as the Blade of the Ruin King already finished. Clyde roaming out now. Finally, the punish will come through. Hook's gonna land from Blaze Nova and Short Hop collects his second. Really well played by Blaze Nova. It almost looked like Sivir was gonna make the escape again, but not this time. And engage onto Gorica, but Niles just does not have enough of that save. Does have his ulti, but so does Gorica. So Niles just happy with the pressure again. Now 30 CS ahead. And with Gorica not having TP and being dismounted, might have to be careful here. So let's see how this one started off again. Connects the instant knockup with the damage from Zera, but even though the hook pulls him out of the ultimate, there's still more charges to go. Like, credit to CKG, Wolfie was not gonna miss with that knockup already connected there from the Aatrox, so looking very proficient here on the champion. Also with that Rift Herald, maybe looking to channel mid and take down some plates. Miles was also roaming down for this Infernal Drake. That's two Infernals in a row for Maryville University. They are getting the greatest of all dragons. You see that skill shot accuracy two in a row? That's pretty good. Graves is really squishy, so he's not feeling too hot to be fighting around an objective anymore. Yeah, just a bit of poke is nice, but this is the issue. Saskia already exposed. Miles, though, finds a double stun. Blasting with a TP down here. It's going to be Gorica moving in. They might just go straight for the Tower Dive, but they're getting pinched a little as well. And Julia's still not very much health. He's bold. There's not a lot of pressure into the mid lane. So if Western Ontario, they're engaging. DKG going to face tank it. Does have the world ender. Gets over the wall as well with the dash. And Clyde got to take down Julius already. CKG does pop the world under. Now going to start the resurrect with Vanguard dead. Tags Blaze Nova under short hop. Miles goes, finds the stun. Gets in there as Sasuke is able to take down Blaze Nova for the last hit. And Maryville turned it around very swiftly. The counter engage was beautiful. CKG was able to stay alive with the reset and the Nautilus ultimate from Clyde bought so much time. When you clump up like that, when you're just trying to rush in, you make it so easy for the depth charge to hit multiple members, get everybody knocked aside, and makes it a playground for an Aurelia to go in. Now it's so confident he flashed into that. Made it work. The Infernal Drake goes over. They get the Herald charge onto the mid tower. Starting to really build up those advantages, up about a thousand gold as we'll watch this again. Yeah, so CKG, rather, Gorica going in, and look at what happens. Julius gets knocked up, but Thresh does as well. And so the second that he gets taken out, CKG gets the reset, Sivir's in a great position, buying so much time, the tanks have already done their job, and there's nobody on there. There's just no targets, no damage from Western Ontario. And that engage all happened, because Gorica makes the teleport to the bottom lane, is unable to find the play that they want, and they force a fight because they don't want to just waste somebody's time teleporting down there without an objective. So that's being a little bit desperate, not recognizing that, hey, we made a mistake here, let's walk away from it instead of forcing something that just isn't there. Well, on the Maryville side, it's continued control. Still first brick on the table, so Kim can't grab that bonus gold from the turret. But again, Maryville is never a team that's in a hurry. Play it patient. They know how to they know how to play out a lot of different positions. They're thrilled. They're getting all the objectives that they need. You're getting Rift Heralds. You're getting Infernal Dragons. Your lanes are doing just fine. You've got Irelia, for the most part, keeping up. Zerath, 13 CS down. It's only the Sivir. So I think that they're more than happy if they keep taking these fights that Western wants to keep forcing because it makes their job a lot easier. They don't have to think about it when the fight is going to start. Western's starting that. Here comes Julius, so Niles two levels ahead of Gorica, so feeling fairly confident at this point. There's two flashes between Gorica and Julius. No wars into the top side. This gank could work. I think they're waiting on Gorica's ultimate to be able to run down Niles. Our trap misses. Niles smells blood instantly, but a good joust through. Now Niles, they're going to have to try and fight a real 1v2. Vanguard's dead pop. Down it goes. Redemption there. Moving in from the Zoe. I was trying to get out of there, but he's blindsided. But here's Wolfie with the assist all the way down. Gorica, though, you're going to remount CKG. World End is up there for the extra speed. And now Julia is going to be the next target. These shots out from Zareth are done. CKG, though, finds the knockup, but here's Slasher with the skill shot. And Zareth roaming up as well. Now a true 3v3 is Niles there. We're going to Gorica again. They're going to attack him. They'll bag him. And that's going to be a kill over bot lane, also fighting, because of course, why not? And it's Whoa. absolute carnage. Wolfie slays Julius, finding the skill shots again. 
Make it two kills in top and two kills in bot. Maryville winning across the map. They're about to ace Western right now. Only Zoe stays alive and the Xerath roam to the top side of the map made a world of difference. Aatrox was not going to seal the deal, but Zoe was able to even assist with that redemption. That play, that sequence of plays was just wild because I also want to see what went down into the bottle lane. We were looking at Kai and Thresh winning this matchup every single time and all of a sudden, they get wiped. And as soon as they say, you know, they haven't got turrets yet, they take two, this play happens, it's really fun. Yeah, so the Xerath is trying to assist with the ultimates, hoping that Niles can finish somebody off. This is a really nice move by Gorica with a little headbutt and then getting CKG out of the way. But Julia stays a little bit too long here, not expecting that the Xerath was going to be so quick to move. They do commit the kill on Julius, and look at this. This is the Ludens Echo proc that really seals the deal. Two levels up from Wolfie onto Julius, and the rest is history. And then the bottom side of the map, let's see how this all went down. So the minion wave advantage, that makes a world of difference. A double knockup between, yeah, with a minion wave and a double knockup, how could you not win that 2v2? And Alex Oscar goes straight in onto the enemy AD. <laughs> and Any lip readers the out there? Out. I think I know what he that's said. That's a beginner level course on lip reading, I think. <laughs> but hey, he's happy, he's playing well, and he should be. He got kind of, you know, tossed around a little in the last 2v2 exchange. Short up, even got the first kill there in the bot lane, but now he's got a 300 gold bounty, moving swiftly in towards two items. and. He's feeling it. Maryville can see that, you know, just a few games away from reclaiming the title for their school. They are very close here. Those two Infernals are going to help out so much. Look at that. Another roam onto Gorica. And Graves has been pinged out. I think they have their eyes set on the jungler who is hoping to try to answer this. Here we go. Well, they find Julius. Wolfie also here. Pop out is the only one they don't have yet. So they're going to try and get onto Gorica. He's mounted currently, but going to get dove on. Vanguard's death will land. Gorica now dismounted, gonna get pulled back by the chain. Niles taking the tower for as long as he can. The end of the line, not enough for the Graves to get the kill. But the resurrection in might be Julius with a counter kill. Oh, tries to fade back, doesn't quite find the star, but everyone's gonna dive in there. Niles gonna try and save his jungler and get the kill on a killing spree as even the bot lane's roaming up. How confident is Mary that they're going for a dive like that? 100 to 0 under the tower on our cled out of all targets, and then they get the jungler to boot at the end. Niles doing a great job of juggling the aggro, and CKG knowing that they have to commit because when you do, he can tank the turret further with the blood well, giving him that extra life. So this is a really great dive out of Maryville University and utilizing the strength in the top lane to just win the game and crush. It's 0-7-0 in the top lane and jungle of Western. Another hook lands in from Clyde. Slasher ignited down. My burn. The Death Touch following. Goodbye. Maryville is just running away with this one. 12-2. That's a... 6,000 gold. It's lead. starting to feel like they can do no wrong. And you can tell the players are getting a little, a little more high tempo, a little faster. It's starting to feel like their opponents a little bit more. Wolfie is a Xerath god, so he's landing every skill shot. Don't worry about it. He's probably only played 5,000 games for this champion. <laughs> he actually has. Yeah. He, this man literally just plays Xerath, Velkos, and skill shot champions. So this is the dive. It starts off with Niles engaging right away. And look at what he does. He lingers on the very edge, tanking one more hit. He knows he has it, barely survives the Graves ultimate, and look at Aatrox. He goes back in there, Wolfie draws another tower shot, and they're all moving around to try to help him out. Niles flashes in, hoping that Graves would commit, but it's more than enough. He does not have the mana nor the damage as the 4 Graves to do anything in that play. And they get the turret out of it as well. The outer ring has been felled. 3-1 in turrets, 12-2 in kills, two infernals, a cloud break, and a partridge in a pear tree. Maryville just making it work. But again, for Weston, never count out, especially their AD as Slash is playing dodgeball. You know, he actually took quite a bit of damage from the minions just doing that, so it was almost as if two spells connected. Well, Niles also transferred down to the bottom half of the map, and uh, Baron on the brain here for Maryville. Hextech flush, other way. Clyde not going in for that one. Good control, it's here from Weston, but they'll be swept out in short order. Drowsy, oh, Slasher! That Comet almost did him in! The Death Town's gonna follow him again! The heal is enough! 
Slasha stays alive. The boomerang almost did him in as well. Sasuke only hitting on the first portion, but without the Zoe, your main wave clear to the mid lane. How do you defend this? It looks like the Zerath and Sivir are going to continue to push and a Rotato into the bottom lane. Trying to go for another tier two. Get more gold in your pocket. Good stun there from Niles as Garka's bear threat was about to pull him back. Now if he'll do rotate down there, maybe thinking about some sort of dive, but looks to go back now towards the mid lane, probably go back left and clear out the vision in the red jungle to make sure Baron not a thing. 1v3, Niles, how are you feeling today? Vanguard dead, gonna get popped, but that's more than enough this time around. Niles will get shut down. A lot of great CC out of Blaze Nova, and this is the time that Julius needs to pull up a miracle. The only thing that will save him is to be a Baron steal and Maryville is just not even going to risk it because there's no need to do so. They're already so far ahead, they don't need to take any chances. The more ahead you are, the lower risk plays you need to take. Hey, Julius, I just didn't expect him to be on that side of the map. As soon as that control is in, they're like, oh, the jungle is here. We got to go. So Maryville do at least back away, but that means Niles just dies for nothing. So let's see how it started. So he sees them coming in, and yeah, Fled goes in on you right away. The stun does not connect onto the Thresh. He lands a beautiful hook on the dash from Irelli. Who, who knows? That might have actually been the da the hook that saved Kaiser because there's a lot of damage on an Irelli that's turning on an AD carry. Also, gold going over to the Kaiser is always nice. Uh, getting that assist. Now two items finished for short hop. Although Sasuke is quickly printing money with the Essence Reaver and the W just ricocheting down waves. But again, this is something we've seen from Maryville so many mid-games now. Niles is strong, he'll go into the side lane confidently, and the team will just play around Baron. Very classic 4-1. And they're going to continue to do so. You've got two control wars in the mid lane, Clyde feeling confident enough to start clearing on his own, because he knows that Julius isn't going to solo him. This jungler doesn't do anything. Look at that. He used three autos and a W. Didn't even dent the shield out of Clyde. Yep, Zerath doing more work if he had landed some ulti charges. Actually, he's finished a death cap. So Wolfie going for the very aggressive build. I guess he stacked the uh, Dark Seal 10 times. He's like, you know what? Today's the day for a death cap. I need a nice new hat. It's a day for a Magi's. Maybe. It's always a day for a Magi's. If you can acquire 10 Dark Seal stacks, why not? You know, the, one of the greatest tips to bet, get better at League of Legends is play as if you always had a Magi's. You know what? I like that. It's Maryville move into the jungle again, just Trying to do that due diligence around the Baron. Getting the wards. Clive's gonna face check. Nautilus pretty spooky. CKG also getting chunked down by the Zoe, but Wolfie answers in kind as Julius, despite being in fog, still getting chunked. Yeah, it's Wolfie that they have to be really scared about. Aatrox and Aurelia, yeah, sure, but we saw that if they get CC, they're gonna be taken out right away. It's the Xerath that's gonna be a mile away that only Kled can realistically reach because there's a cleanse on Zoe as well. If he starts landing that poke, there's four squishy members on the side of Western. They cannot survive a rotation of Xerath. Well... Weston has at least done a good job of just letting the game play out a little more slowly. They're still getting gold on their carries. People are starting to pick up their second items, and they're behind by a significant amount of gold. But Maryville have uh, continued to play patiently here. They build themselves up towards the Baron. They're clearing out the vision. Wolfie's going to continue playing dodgeball with his friends over at Weston. Not bad. You can see why he tried to go for that. Get the support away. The man that's in charge of the vision, he has to base. Looking to see an engage onto CK. Clyde finds the hook. Deftard gonna find it onto Julius as well. Slash are gonna be the first target. Ignited down. Will fall to Clyde. Now CKG wanted to get Julius, but Blazenova pulls him out safely with the lantern. Really great heads up play out of CKG because Slasher 1144 would not have died to that. The ignite was on him from Clyde, but it wasn't gonna make the difference. But instead, he recognized it and uses that challenging smite, sorry, the blue smite, to make sure that the damage is there and secures the kill onto Slasher, who now there's not a single member that can afford to throw a spell into the brush to check. Julius is not going to get this. Yeah, they've got great vision here. Oh, actually, Julius snuck in, but there's Niles over the top. They're going to try and get a kill ASAP. Julius there. The Baron goes over. There was potential, but they take the jungle, they take the Baron, and Maryville are going to close out the game. There was a small chance there, but unfortunately, he can't find the objective. The other part of the team does find that Cloud Dragon, but it's just not the dragon you want at this stage in the game. With Baron on four, rather five members, 
Oof, that's a tall order. So let's take another look at this. And they engage onto CKG. Stun and paddle start already used. And look at that. Slasher is ignited, but it's the blue smite that makes the difference here to take out Slasher. And then Julius, he just sneaks his way back up, hoping to get a steal because there's nothing else. You can't do anything else as Graves. You just don't have the utility. Well, Crumbs, you ask, and today you shall receive. There is a Majize now. Finish Great. the Wolfie. Still has the 10 stacks from earlier. We'll see how many he gets before the game can end. And with that ulti being under a minute, and it's only rank two right now for the Xerath. And see why he's firing it almost on cooldown. And it's very obnoxious to deal with because if you try to save it for a team fight, you're more often than not just going to be better providing the utility from your W and your stun and even the Q hitting multiple targets. Whereas you can always use that ultimate to just poke somebody out and then engage onto Niles. It's Graves, Kled, and Thresh as well. Everyone's roaming down the slipstream. <laughs> Wolfie's like, I got you, don't worry. Oh, I actually want to short up instead. There's one, two, three. Ooh. All right, he's out. But it's again, effective. he's half HP now. Yeah, I mean, any squishy target at this point, given how much AP Zareth has built up. I mean, it's, you're already trying to defend the Baron up minions crashing onto your turret. Now there's a Zareth throwing stuff at you. Niles is continuing to try and 1v3. I think he's going to try and escape here. Make a 1v4. Dips back over, gets hooked again by Blaze Nova, and Niles will fall. Blaze Nova's got Niles' number here, but unfortunately, Maryville University has the rest of the team, the base, and everything in between, so it's not like it matters a whole lot. They crack the base, and now Sivir's going to be escorting the minions in the top lane because they do want that inhibitor. I think they're strong enough to do it as a 4v5, but I can understand if they don't risk it. Can just wait 25 seconds for Niles and his TP. And in the meantime, Wolfie might just try and get the ult. Let loose again once he does have it back off cooldown. Still pressure there. A minute on the Baron still here for Maryland. And Maryville, we saw this in the last game where they're not willing to concede pressure even when uh, Niles does die. And Weston have done a good job picking off the side laner. But still, Maryville just feels like very few mistakes made in these kind of situations. Just really know how to close out a game clean. Well, they know that their engage is Kled, and his ultimate was down because it was spent to try to catch Niles. Here we go again. So it helps, like, get me out of here. I don't like this game. I signed up for League of Legends, not Dodgeball. It's one of the hardest targets to actually go on, going on to the Kai'Sa. She has life steal. She's very fast, has movement abilities. Normally, you'd see that kind of play pattern be used on a less mobile champion that matters a lot for the engage. So if you were to, say, hit the Thresh, all of a sudden, there's no, no one that wants to step up to go for these hooks. And that means that the engage is just so much weaker. In a lot of ways, it is just cover fire, you know? Wanting to make sure to open up space. They took two inhibited turrets now. Just waiting for that first inhib to really kind of tie things up nicely. But the Baron is wearing off. Niles will get the tier two here in the bottom lane. But Weston do get through the first Baron without losing an inhib for now. That's the caveat for now because the well, pressure is relentless in top and middle. They didn't lose it in the Baron. They may still lose it as Saskio and Clyde look to push in, but Weston responding. Saskio needed a few more autos, but he's not going to get them. There's the flash play. Short up right over the top here as Wolfie again keeping the back down. Chance lands hook is good as well. And now Short up going to get tied up in the fight breaking out. He does get the shot down, but Kaiser will die. And it's Wolfie now going to grab himself a double kill. Gorica dead. The next one to fall is Niles. He's able to claim that one. And Weston thought they'd found something, but instead they'll get almost aced in their base. And Maryville are going to take a second next and push themselves to match point. They are just crushing this game. It looks like the competition has not showed up. Maryville is here to make a statement. They want to win Collegiate once again and are now just a game away of doing, for doing so. We've won once already. We're going to make it look even better this time. Appears to be the credo of Maryville this go around. Niles with a big smile on his face. And why wouldn't you be when your team's up 2-0? They're crushing everywhere. Top lane is winning, mid lane is winning, the bottom lane is having a great time. Yes, you died, but you're able to bounce back, get a double kill, take that objective. So across the board, they're just firing on all cylinders. And for Weston, you know, they put kind of the eggs where we expected to them. Short up got things rolling early on. Slashers on a comfort pick. Julius went straight for comfort on the graves. I almost wonder, I mean, did Hecarim get banned in phase one? It again? did. Okay, Hecarim that's was why. Banned. I was like, why didn't he play Hecarim and got banned? That makes sense. I also would ban Hecarim, given what I saw yesterday, but it's tough. I mean, even Gorica on the Kled have to start to think, like, what, what answers do you have? 
I think you have to go for a stronger jungle matchup, something that can provide a utility. The champions like Sejuani that were really high in priority yesterday, champions like Rek'Sai that can really affect the team, affect those lanes with crowd control because it's not enough to just have damage. You need to lock down some of these members that are just so dangerous. You cannot allow Wolf, you cannot allow Niles, you cannot allow anybody to just deal damage unprecedented. You have to lock them down. And it might be tough now, with presumably the side switching back, but I think maybe instead of taking Kled, just try and counterpick Niles. Like, Garak Good luck with that. Not, he needs something a little bit more, I mean, that's true. He needs something a little bit more stable if he can get it, because that game was basically no jungle attention, and Niles was still just dominating from minute one. Well, they gave him the same matchup again. You've got Irelian, Aatrox. This is something that they've clearly practiced, the flex with Aatrox, so I think they understand the limits of these champions even more, especially when you see Wolfie going into Rome, and they go for a 100-0 to zero tower dive on the Kled, that's not, that does not say we don't know this composition. That says we have run this a million times. We know exactly what we're capable of. And I know you want to sing Wolfie's praises. So again, I think his roams, his effectiveness, it really feels like a 3v3 in that top lane rather than the 1v1 it's supposed to be. The Tigress and the State Farm Analyst Desk is ready to break. However, is ready to break down Marionville's win. So let's head over. Thank you again, Pastry Time. Maryville are proving that they are hungry to get back to their 2017 status as college champions. We're back on the analyst desk, this time with the mid laner from UCI. We have Descartan. How have you been feeling today? Uh, pretty good. Uh, watching the games has been a lot of fun, and also just seeing everyone on for the last time. It's been great. Yeah, it's the last day, the last time to see these teams in action. And as far as we went through the draft, a lot of comfort picks coming through on this one. Yeah, some comfort picks I like, some I didn't <laughs> like. I like the idea of going back to the Kled. It's one of Gorka's best champions, and he had a bit of a rough game the first time. Not as big of a fan with the Graves to combo with it. Graves is great for skirmishing the other jungler and trying to build a lead that way, but not that good for interacting with lanes, which is all CKG seems to want to do. Yeah, exactly. I think there were opportunities for him to try and contest the top side 2v2, maybe with a different opening path where he's moving towards topside scuttle and trying to either protect Gorica or get something done but he ended up just doing a full clear and then trying to affect the bot lane and ultimately got counter ganked and fell behind and Graves is one of these feast or famine champions where if you're not getting big advantages in your jungle matchup then you're going to be relatively useless later and we saw that this game. Well, in addition to the jungle matchup, the mid lane is a great place to look, especially with the mid laner himself here on the desk, the Xerath from Wolfie, and then we had Slasher on the Zoe. How do you think that that fared as far as laning phase and beyond? Uh, I think, honestly, Slasher played a really good job on Zoe. Um, Xerath, known to be a counter pick, and especially since it's one of Wolfie's ult ultimate con comfort picks. And so I think Zoe from Slasher is also a comfort for him, and uh, he did a really good job of showing down lane phase. Ultimate, uh, unfortunately, it was kind of sad that you know Wolfie was able to find assists and kills in the side lane with his ultimate. And, you know, mm -hmm. it just snowballed from there. Yeah, and I think it speaks to the jungle control as, as well this series. Typically, you don't expect a Xerath to be able to get out of lane and, and be roaming and using his ultimate aggressively in the top lane. Uh, and here, this is CKG with a really intelligent opening path. He's affecting the top lane and burning Gorica's flash. And this completely tilted the top lane matchup. When you have to lose your flash this early, your wave is bouncing in a terrible position. It just becomes almost impossible to play. Yeah, it goes on from there because the bot lane action started picking up after that. Uh, you know, you have this teleport where everyone's coming down, but the fact that your Kled's not going to have the flash to follow up on any potential big plays, there's so many people just barely living here for the side of Maryville, and they just can't get any of the cleanup kills. And those are where it comes in through, right? Getting that gold advantage. So moving into kind of how the game went beyond that Descartan, it looked as if Western was getting a bit uneasy in the way they were reacting to these plays. Yeah, definitely. Um, we saw Julius, he was kind of... I think rattled after he got counter ganked and then he was just trying to make hero plays trying to get as many advantages as he could we saw later like he got caught out trying to take the scuttle on his own and um trying to go back top lane to affect that matchup some more but that only ended up giving more gold over to the side of maryville yeah it's one of those things as a jungler where you make a mistake or something goes wrong and you feel like there's all this pressure on you to have to come in and and make a play to get your team back in the game and you end up sort of running it down uh and it's one of the hardest things to really hold yourself back and focus on your own game uh, and say okay maybe this isn't my time to shine but my teammates can have my back uh, and, and really we saw that yesterday you know they trust each other it was a full team performance uh, and that's what we need to see more of from Western. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to say because, you know, this is starting to look pretty dire. This is a more lopsided defeat than I think they had at all yesterday against UCI. So Western's got to dig deep. They did manage to do that yesterday, but a lot of these plays 
you know, after they were close in that those first couple highlights that we showed, it started being a bit of a slaughter where they're able to find multiple kills without having anything answered back. And suddenly this bot lane is getting solo killed by Saskio and, and Clyde when that was supposed to be one of the weak uh, points that we were talking about in the last game segment. And being in a best of five, we're going into game three. It's a very different environment, right, for these players. And Descartan, you had to experience going the distance yesterday. So what are you thinking for these teams moving forward as Western tries to keep this going in game number three? I think definitely uh, Western has a strong bot lane. They should try to play around it more. And actually, like, um, Shore Hop and Blaze Nova, they were able to pick up those two solo kills. Um, we're seeing right here the replay on Saskio. It's really really good setup and they were just able to pick up a free kill and um, yeah like this bot lane they're able to make advantages on their own and I think if Julius is able to come down and really play around this bot lane more I think you know Western has a shot at you know turning it around and having a series on their hand. Yeah, Blaze Nova was the guy yesterday who landed that critical hook onto Youngbin to kind of drag them back in that series in game four. They're clearly playing pretty well today, and I think, you know, the pick with the Graves is exactly what I don't like to see. The Hecarim yeah. is like the perfect champ for Julius' playstyle, mm -hmm. where it's focused on mostly farming early and can turn some ganks, but then it becomes a monstrous team fighter. It's getting banned every game, so you need to find something else, be it Nocturne or, or whatever other champion. Yeah. yeah, and I think Nocturne is, is a great idea, especially since it's putting so much pressure on Niles in the side lane. It becomes so difficult for him to actually pressure the map when he's constantly having to think about the paranoia. It fits Julius' style of hard farming, so, uh, you know, Graves, maybe not the best pick. Nocturne seems to be a good answer. And Descartan, are there any particular picks that you would like to not see that we saw today in this game here, or ones that you want to see erupt? Um, definitely, I agree with the Nocturne pick. Uh, they played it against us yesterday, and I think it would be really helpful in trying to play to that bot side and diving um, Maryville. And um, yeah, honestly, like once again, like my teammate Avi said, you know, putting Short Hop on his comfort, Jinx, Caitlyn, Siver, that could help him like really carry his team, give him a team fight potential. And yeah, I think honestly, all Western needs to do is get a good mental reset, come into game three prepared and, you know, play their A game because I think they can really give Maryville a series if they are playing their best. Well, Descartan, it's been wonderful getting insight from you and all the other players we have here for the college championship. Maryville are one win away from reclaiming their title. See if Western can keep the series alive after this. He's popping off over there with the, what's that instrument, the saxophone? Here. Yes. Oh, it's the, one the saxophone. It's the one Homer Simpson uses. It's gonna be Clyde perhaps dead here. Flash over, finds the wall for the hook, but it doesn't quite go far enough. And he's gonna go down. That's first blood over to Short Hop, starting it off right here for Weston. Gorica again, they're gonna attack him, they'll bag him. And that's gonna be a kill over bot lane also fighting, because of course, why not? And it's Whoa. absolute carnage. Wolfie slays Julius, finding the skill shots again. Tony, get him. Yeah, I got her, I got her, I got her. Julius. AD dead? Yeah, yeah. Yep. yep. Front line, front line. Yeah, just hit Clyde. Yep. Clyde, yeah. that thrash maybe? Nice. Or Zoe? Kill them all. Front Zoe? Come on, Zoe. Got no flash. Nice. Zoe? Let's go, boys. 